In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create this shop's top 7 best-selling digital backdrop designs. And be sure to stay tuned as I'm not only going to show you how to create these 7 styles of digital backdrops consistently, but I'll also dive into some crucial editing skills using Photopea and Canva that you'll need to create some attractive mockups for your listings. As you can see here in Allura, this shop opened February 2020. They have just over 200 listings and they're generating over $8,000 per month. This clearly shows that these particular backdrop styles are currently selling extremely well on Etsy. So without further ado, let's dive in. This whole process begins with coming up with prompts necessary to generate our images using Leonardo AI. But if you're anything like me and struggle with creating good prompts, then you're going to love this foolproof method. So if I take a look at this shop's best-selling listing, 10 floral fine art portrait texture digital photography backdrops, you'll see they look a lot like a textured oil painting with a flowered border. But if you were to try to describe this as a prompt to Leonardo AI, you will quickly discover that this is a very difficult image to replicate. Trust me, after many failed attempts and hours trying to come up with a consistent method to recreate images similar to these and other listings, I finally nailed it. And this is how it's done. The first step is to grab a screenshot of the image you would like to replicate, then head to Leonardo AI. Here you want to select the fine tune models from the toolbar on the left, and I found that this SDXL 0.9 model gives the best results with this method. This is the latest Stable Diffusion model, which is also available to use on Leonardo's free tier. Okay, so generating with this model, we first need to adjust our settings. For this to work, we need to turn off the prompt magic setting, which will allow you to use Leonardo AI's image to image feature. Then once you have your screenshot uploaded, you're going to want to adjust the init strength, which is basically just your image strength. I've been getting the best results with this set high between 5 and 9. Then I also changed from the default dimensions to 760 or so by 1000. This isn't crucial to your final image, so feel free to adjust as you like here. And I feel like generating four images this time, so I'll select that. Now you're ready to input your prompt. With this method, you can keep your prompt short and simple. For instance, I'll simply type red roses and generate. And as you can see with this method, the images produced are very similar to the original image, including the texture, which would normally have to be achieved with another app like Photop using a textured overlay. Now let me turn the init strength down to 7 and show you the results. You can see now, with the init strength down, Leonardo strays from the image and throws its own creative style in the mix, which is extremely useful as I will show you in some upcoming image generations. Alright, so let's do this again, this time with the shop's second best listing, these old master backgrounds. I'll simply view their listing on Etsy and grab another screenshot. These look to me like grungy oil paintings or even rock patterns. Then back in Leonardo, we'll repeat the process using the image to image feature, importing our screenshot from the listing. And this time I'll crank the init strength up to 8, then change the prompt to something generic like stone color and generate. Oops, forgot to adjust the size. We'll change that in a minute, but yeah, look how clean these images are, and very close to the original. Right, I'm going to quickly change the dimensions to around 760 by 1000. Then I'll add the color red to the prompt this time and see what we get. Okay, as you can see, the prompt plays little role in the image output with the init strength set this high, as these images are still virtually identical with no color change. Now let me show you what happens if you crank the init strength way down. I'll drop it down to 5 this time, and generate. And now you can see Leonardo gets pretty creative and follows your prompt closer, as these do look a lot like stone, but it's also lost its similarity to the original image. So really quickly, if you're finding value in the video, please smash that like button for me, and consider subscribing to my channel for more high-impact, no-nonsense tutorials like this. Okay, back into it, let's try the third listing, these pastel smoke digital backdrops. Following the same method, going to the listing, grabbing another screenshot, and heading back to Leonardo. Importing your image and adjusting your prompt, I'll say smoke this time. With the init strength set to 9, I'll generate. Now these images should be virtually identical to the original since I didn't change the image size and the image strength is turned to the max. And as you can see, yes, these are virtually identical. So I'll turn the image strength down to about 6 and adjust the size and generate again. Now these are starting to look a lot more unique, but I think I want to turn the strength down even further. So this time I'll drop it down to 4.5. There we go, that's what I'm after. Now you see why this is extremely useful. Now we have one of a kind images that are in the style of the original, but completely unique. And you can also adjust your prompt. This time I'll add red to the prompt and increase the guidance scale from seven to nine, which will actually follow your prompt more closely. And again, I'll generate. 
There, now you can see a little more red in the image. And these are perfect pastel smoke digital photography backdrops, ready to upscale and enhance and get listed in your Etsy shop. All right, so the next listing is a flowing fabric maternity digital backdrop. I'll spare you the screenshot and the uploading to Leonardo as these steps remain the same for this method. So here in Leonardo, I'll simply input silk this time, cranking the init strength up to eight and generate. And again, forgetting to adjust the size, these images are virtually identical. So changing the size and turning the init strength down to about seven, I'll generate again. And as you can see, these are looking pretty good. All right, let me quickly show you one more, then I think you'll have the idea. So I'll be moving on to demonstrating some valuable editing techniques that are not only good to be familiar with, but will actually be crucial in creating your listings. All right, the last listing I'll be demonstrating with is this natural beige floral fine art digital backdrop. I'll grab my screenshot, head back to Leonardo, remove the old screenshot and replace it with the new, adjust my settings, add a simple prompt of flowers and generate again. And again, we get a really clean, usable image, but I want a little more variation, so I'll drop the inner strength down to 0.59 and add red to the prompt, then generate again. And there you go. There's a hint of red in the center of the flower, making it completely unique from the original, yet maintaining the style. Okay, so now I think you're familiar enough with the process that we can move on to some editing techniques. These are going to help you create some amazing mock-ups that will definitely compete with your competitors. As you can see, all of these top listings have a subject in the image, so I'll demonstrate how to achieve this quickly and easily using Photopea and Canva. After you have a couple images of subjects you would like to use, you can head to Canva first. Then you can upload the image of your new subject. Simply use in a new design with the custom size, which will maintain the existing dimensions. Then you simply edit the photo using the background remover tool. And Canva does an excellent job at removing these backgrounds. Then just drag the image you want to impose your subject over, careful not to replace the background. Then position the image to the back and resize accordingly. Now you're ready to download this as a PNG, as we'll finish the job in Photo P. Okay, let me quickly show you one more example with this image that was generated in Leonardo AI. Same process, edit photo and use the background remover tool. This time, it did a really fantastic job with the waves around the edges, but I do want to remove this darker portion of the dress. You can do this by going back into the background remover tool and brushing it out manually. Then again, add your background. This one was also generated with Leonardo. Adjust to fit and save. And now you're ready to input these images into Photo P to finish the process. In Photo P, you want to use the spot healing brush tool from the toolbar on the left under the eraser looking tab. Then from the toolbar at the top left, you can select the size and the hardness, which I generally keep around 50%. Now you can simply brush along the edges that you want to blend with the background, and this AI seamlessly matches the background smoke to the affected areas. Very nice. This is super handy. Let me demonstrate again on this subject. As you can see, this has a really hard edge and needs work. So again, grab the spot healing brush from the toolbar on the left, adjust your settings accordingly, and begin to brush over the edge of your image. And there you go, with minimal effort, this AI does a fantastic job at blending these images. When you're happy, simply select file from the top left and export as a PNG. Okay, let me show you one more quick trick using Canva. Say you have a screenshot like this that you couldn't find without the subject in place and you just want the ring. With Canva, you can quickly and easily remove subjects from the image. Canva's AI Magic Erase tool makes editing these images much easier than using Photopea or Photoshop. Now you can save this new image and use it in Leonardo with the image to image feature, repeating the process to create similar images. If you've enjoyed this video and want to learn more about how to set up an Etsy shop and get this side hustle into action for yourself, then check out this video here. And if you have any questions about the process or any good ideas for future videos, please drop them in the comments below. And if you're finding value in the videos, please like, share, and consider subscribing to my channel for more high impact tutorials like this. Thank you for watching and be blessed.